So this video is about factorising quadratic expressions and factorising is the opposite process of multiplying out and we can learn how to factorise then through examining carefully multiplying out. So let's multiply out these brackets here x plus 4 times x plus 3. I get x squared plus 4x plus 3x plus 4 times 3 which is 12 obviously but let me leave it like this for now. So when I combine these together I get x squared plus now this would be 7x, and I'm just going to leave that for a second as 4 plus 3x, and this is still 4 times 3. Now obviously, if I was giving an answer for multiplying out here, I would say it's x squared plus 7x plus 12. But the point is, what you can see here is this 4 and 3 uh, comes here as 4 plus 3, which is 7, and here is 4 times 3, which is 12. So, um, so that's that expression multiplied out. And the idea is going to be if we can find those numbers that add together to give 7 and multiply to give 12, then we could use it uh, from an expression like this to go back to one like this. Uh, before we do, let's just have a quick look at one with a negative value in it. So what if I did x minus 2 times x plus 6, then that would be x squared minus 2x plus 6x minus 12. And actually this minus 12, I still want to think of it as plus minus 2 times 6, which is the same thing as just minus 12. So again, I've got x squared, and I can think of this as being adding on minus 2 plus 6, lots of x, uh, and plus minus 2 times 6, so that's x squared plus 4x minus 12. But again, these two numbers, minus 2 and 6, are, are key because I've got minus 2 plus 6 here to give 4, and minus 2 times 6 to give minus 12. So if I can find those numbers, that's the key to... Uh, to doing this factorising. So factorising is just going the other way, so it's taking an expression that's already multiplied out and trying to put it back into brackets. So here it's of the same form of the sorts of ones we just multiplied out, so it's got an x squared, an x term and a constant term, so we might be able to do it in two brackets as before. Now the challenge would be then, can we find two numbers that add together to give uh, 9 so I want my two numbers a plus b to be 9, and I want them to multiply together a times b to be 14. You can think about it, and you'll find that 7 and 2 works. Okay, 7 plus 2 is 9, and 7 times 2 is 14. Okay, so this would multiply out as, this would factorize, sorry, as x plus 2 times x plus 7. You could check it by multiplying it out. Here's another one. This time I want two numbers that add together to give 4, and also multiply together to give 4. Think about it, and hopefully you'll come to 2 and 2. So 2 plus 2 is 4, and 2 times 2 is 4. So this could be x plus 2 times x plus 2. If you wanted to, you could write that as x plus 2 squared, like that. What about this one? x squared minus 2x minus 15. Well now I need two numbers that add together to give minus 2, and they've got to multiply together to give minus 15. Again, you've got to think about it for a while, because it's multiplied together to give minus 15 here instead of a plus, we know that one of them's got to be negative and one's got to be positive, uh, and you can see that the numbers that work here are uh, minus 5 and 3. Yeah. Um, if it was mi minus 3 and plus 5, that would be plus 2 but minus 5 and 3 is minus 2, minus 5 times 3 is minus 15, so that gives us, so instead of now x plus 2, we've got a minus 5 here, so it's x minus 5 times x plus 3, and you can check that that multiplies out to what we want. Okay, one last one here, um, x squared minus 7x plus 6, now we want them to add together to give minus 7, and times together to give 6, so they're adding together to give a negative number, but they're multiplying together to give a positive number. So this is going to mean that, that they're both going to have to be negative, and then when I multiply them together I'll get a positive number, but when I add them together I'll get a negative number. And you can see here that the numbers that work are minus 6 and minus 1. Okay, so this one would be x minus 6 times x minus 1. And this one looks slightly different because it's got this 2x squared at the front, and you know if I you know, so it's not going to be just something, it can't be something like just x plus something times x plus something, because that would just have 1x squared. Now there is a harder method for dealing with these sorts of things, but 
whenever you're factorizing something, before you you know think, oh no, it's gone wrong, or I need a much harder method, we should start by thinking, well, is there something easy we could do to help? And here there is, because um, easier factorizing than this, you, you should already have done methods of pulling out a common factor. So uh, here, just to pull out a common factor, I can see there's two in every single term. So this is the same as two times x squared plus nine x plus twenty. And now this thing in here, x squared plus 9x plus 20, is the sort of thing we can now factorize with our new method. And uh, so I want two numbers that add together to give 9 and multiply together to give 20. And you can see that uh, the numbers that work are 4 and 5. So this is 2 times x plus 4 times x plus 5. So there's a good lesson there. You know, don't resort to too hard methods when your easier ones will suffice. Whenever you're factorizing something, we start by looking for a common factor. Here's another one uh, that's similar then. Uh, here, so we start by looking for a common factor. Uh, 3 looks like it might work, and 2, 3, 1 does have a factor of 3. Uh, the digits 2 plus 3 plus 1 add up to 6, which is a multiple of 3, so that means it divides by 3. And you can check that it's then 3 times x squared plus 4x minus 77. So now I need two numbers that times together to give minus 77, add together to give plus 4, and what works is 11 and minus 7. Uh, that gives us the plus 4 that we want, the minus 77. So this is 3 times uh, x plus 4 times x minus sorry, uh, x plus 11 times x minus 7. Yep. So, and of course all of these, it doesn't matter if we write these other way around, so that would be the same as 3 times x plus 11 times x minus 7, either of these two forms are just as good as each other. One of the reasons this is so useful is that we can use it to solve some equations, and we'll look at that in the next